set up the game of Seven Wonders, first set up the game area. A rather large area is needed to play this game. When setting up, first separate the three decks. Next, each of the decks will be adjusted based on how many players are playing. First, adjust the age 3 deck by removing the 10 purple guild cards from the deck. Shuffle the cards and then draw cards randomly. These will be the cards used in the game. The number of guild cards drawn will be equal to the number of players plus 2. For example, in a 4 player game, 6 guilds would be drawn. Set the selected guild cards aside for now and place any unused guilds back in the game box. Next, remove cards from each of the three decks based on how many players are in the game. Each card in all three of the decks has a number on the bottom. This number tells the highest number of players this card will be used for. So in a four player game, the three plus and the four plus cards would be used. And the five plus, six plus, and seven plus cards would be placed back in the box. This same process would occur for all three decks. After the necessary cards have been removed from the Age 1, Age 2, and Age 3 decks, place the Guild cards, which were set aside earlier, back on top of the Age 3 deck. Finally, shuffle all three of the decks thoroughly and place them back in the middle of the playing area. Next, set out the coins in a bank, where all players can access them. Also set out the conflict tokens somewhere near the coins. Separate the four types of conflict tokens into piles of negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. After the game area is set up, each player will set up their player area. To set up each player's area, each player will get a wonder board. There are several ways players can decide which board to play with. In a beginner game, it is recommended that players shuffle the seven wonder cards and deal one to each player. Each player will look at their card and gain the matching wonder board. In a beginner game, it is also recommended that players play on the A side of the board, since this is the more basic side. If players want more variation in the game, they can choose to shuffle the wonder cards and deal one to each player. As players flip over their card, they will gain the corresponding board and they will play on the side of the board that was face up when they flipped over the card. So this player would play on the B side of Babylon. And this player had the A side face up, so they would play on the A side of Alexandria. Another way players can choose their boards is if all players agree they can pass around the boards and select one and then choose which side they would like to play as. Both the A and B sides of Wonder Boards can be played with in the same game because the boards are designed to be balanced in games. After gaining their Wonder Board, each player will also be given three value one coins, which they will place on their Wonder Board. And they will also be dealt seven cards from the Age One deck. If the cards were removed properly during the game area setup, all of the H1 deck cards should be gone after all players have received their seven cards. After setting up the game area and each player's area, they are ready to begin the game. The game consists of three ages, starting with age one. Each age consists of six turns, and each turn consists of three steps. During step one, all players will look at their hand cards simultaneously and choose one card to keep by placing it face down. They will then place the remaining hand cards face down next to the player to their left. When all players have placed one card in front of them, they will move into step two and play their one card that they kept. They may play their one card in one of three ways. Their first option is to build the structure. Built structures will be placed face up in a player's area. Brown and gray cards are resource cards and will always be played under the top corner of a player's wonder board, like this. All other structures will be placed above a player's wonder board and will be sorted by color. When they build a structure, they will look to the top left corner of the card for the cost. If there is nothing there, the card is free and can be built at no cost. If there is a cost for the card, it will be a symbol in the top left corner of the card. If the structure has a coin amount for a cost, the player will return that amount of coins to the bank and then place the structure in the appropriate place in their player area. If the structure has a resource cost, the player will first look to the top left section of their wonder board. They may use the resources printed on their wonder board and also any resources printed on brown or gray cards. For each one symbol on the card, a player must have that amount of symbols on their wonder board or in cards in their player area. 
A card such as this one, with the slash between the two resources, means a player can choose either one or the other resource during that turn, but not both. At times during the game, a player may not have all of the resources they need on their wonder board. In this case, they would use commerce to buy items from neighbors. For instance, if this player is trying to build this card, they need one glass. They do not currently have any glass resources available on their wonder board or their cards. To get the resources a player needs, they may look to their neighbors directly to the left and directly to the right of them. They may buy any of either of those players' resources from their wonder board or their brown or gray cards. When they buy a resource from another player, they must pay two coins per resource they use by placing their coins on that player's wonder board. They may buy any resource they need from either neighbor to build a structure, and their neighbor may never deny the sale. A player may buy items from both neighbors. If a player builds a card with either of these two symbols on it, they may buy from one or both of their neighbors for a reduced cost. This symbol allows players to buy the three items listed for one coin instead of the normal two. And this symbol allows the player to buy the four resources listed for one coin. The direction of the arrows on the card also matters. An arrow on each side means they can buy at reduced cost from either neighbor. An arrow to the left means a player can buy from the player to their left. And an arrow to the right means a player can buy from the player to their right. Players are never allowed to build more than one of the same structure at any time during the game. The same cards will have both the same name and the same illustrations. The second option players have while using their one card is to build a stage of their wonder. A player will always build their wonder from left to right. In order to build a stage of their wonder, a player must pay the cost on the left side. So this player would have to pay two stones. They will pay with resources the same way that they paid for building structures. When they construct a stage of their wonder, they will place the card underneath that stage, face down. Each stage may only be constructed once. Building structures of your wonder is not needed to win the game. It is just a way to gain bonus items. If a player constructs a stage that has resources with slashes between them, they may choose one of those resources to use during their turn. These resources may only be used by that player, so other players may not buy these resources from them. Constructing a stage of a wonder with a coin symbol on it gives a player that amount of coins immediately after building the stage. A symbol such as this allows a player to pay one coin to the player to their left and to their right for any of the listed resources. If a player builds a stage with this symbol on it, they may, once per age, play their kept card for free and ignore the cost on the card. And if they build a stage with this symbol, they may look through all of the cards discarded since the beginning of the game and choose one of them to build for free. Other symbols on the wonder board will be explained later in the game. The final option a player has for the card they kept is to discard it and gain three coins from the bank. When they discard a card, they will place it face down in the discard pile and then will collect their three coins. The final step of each turn is to gain a new hand by picking up the cards passed to them earlier. All players will now begin a new turn, starting at step one. They will continue playing turns until each player only has two cards left in their hand. At this point, all players will choose one card to play as normal. But instead of passing their final card to their neighbor, their final card will be discarded face down into the discard pile. They will not get coins for discarding this card. If a player has played a stage of their wonder that has this symbol, they are allowed to play both of their cards instead of discarding one, as long as they can pay for the cards they play. They may do this once during each age. After each player has gotten rid of their final age 1 card, they will end the age. All players will then resolve their military conflicts. To do this, they will look to the shields they have in their player area. Shields can either be on cards that they played or on stages of their wonder they have constructed. They will compare the total number of shields they have to their neighbor to the left and then to the neighbor to their right. So they will have a total of two conflicts. If they have more shields than their neighbor in age one, they will gain a plus one victory token. If they have less shields than their neighbor, they will gain a minus one defeat token. If they are tied with their neighbor, neither player will get a token. After each player has resolved their two conflicts with their two neighbors, age one is complete and they will move on to age two.
To start Age 2, all players are dealt 7 cards from the Age 2 deck. Age 2 will be played in the same way as Age 1, with players simultaneously choosing one card from their hand to keep and passing the rest of the cards to their neighbor. Then playing that card by either building its structure, constructing a stage of their wonder, or discarding it face down to the discard pile and gaining a value of 3 coins. Then each player will pick up the hand of cards passed to them earlier and start the new turn. There are a few variations in H2. First, cards are now passed to the player to the right instead of to the player to the left. Some structures are also becoming more expensive, but some are also becoming more valuable in the game, such as the archery range, which now has two shields instead of one. There is also now another way to build a structure for free. If there is a name next to the cost of the building, the structure can be built for free if you have already built the building next to the cost. So if this player had already built the workshop, they could now build the archery range for free because it has workshop next to the cost. Players can always look to the bottom right corner of any card. That will tell the buildings that that card will allow to be built for free. There are also new resource symbols available on the yellow cards. These allow a player to choose one of the resources between the slashes to use. The resources on yellow cards are not available to purchase by other players. They are only available to the player who played them. In Age 2, yellow cards with these symbols are introduced into the game. This symbol allows a player to count all of the gray cards they have in their player area and the gray cards that their neighbor to the left and their neighbor to the right has. They will gain two coins per gray card. This card does the same basic thing, except a player will count up the brown cards and gain one coin per card. When all players have taken turns and are down to two cards, they will do the same thing they did in age one, and keep one to play and discard the other one face down. Once again, if they constructed the stage of their wonder with this symbol, they may play both cards instead of discarding one. When all players have played or discarded their last card, they will end age two. The end of the age occurs in exactly the same way it did in age one, with each player comparing the amount of shields with the player directly to their right and with the player directly to their left. The only difference is that now a player that wins a conflict will gain a three token and the loser will gain a negative one token. Tied conflicts will still result in no token being given. When all players have resolved both of their conflicts, they will move into age three. Age 3 occurs in the same way that ages 1 and 2 did. Each player will be dealt 7 cards and turns will be taken as normal. There are a few changes in age 3. One change is that after a player chooses their one card to keep, they will switch the direction they pass their cards in and pass to the left, just as they did in age 1. The cost of most cards is very high, and all cards have abilities that will either help a player score at the end of the game or help them with their conflict with their neighbors at the end of the age. There are no more resource cards, so if a player has not previously collected their own resources, they will have to depend on buying from their neighbors. In H3, these four symbols can give helpful benefits during the game. This symbol allows a player to count the amount of stages of their wonder they have built and gain three coins per stage immediately after they build it. This card allows a player to count the number of yellow cards they have in their player area. They will gain one coin per yellow card they have immediately after playing this card. This card has the same effect as the previously described card, but with brown cards. And this card allows a player to count up the number of gray cards they have in their player area and gain two coins per gray card. Each of these cards also has a second symbol, which will be used at the end of the game. There is also a new type of card available in age 3, the purple guild card. These cards can offer some very special advantages while scoring at the end of the game. When all players have taken turns and are down to two cards, they will do the same thing they did in ages one and two. Choose one to keep and place the other in the discard pile. The discard pile will be composed of age one, age two, and age three cards together. Once again, if they constructed the stage of their wonder with this symbol on it, they may construct both of their cards rather than discarding one. When all players have played or discarded their last card, they will end age three. The end of age 3 occurs in exactly the same way it did in ages 1 and 2, with each player comparing their amount of shields with the player directly to their right and with the player directly to their left. The only difference is that now a player who wins a conflict will gain a 5 token and the loser will gain a negative 1 token. Tied conflicts will still result in no token being given. When all players have resolved both of their conflicts, the game is over and players will do their final scoring.
When the game ends, players will receive points. They may either use the scoring sheets provided with the game or a piece of paper. First, each player will score their military conflicts by adding the total of their victory and defeat tokens. So a player's military conflict score will either be positive, negative, or zero. Next, they will score their treasures. Each player will count up their leftover coins and then divide that number by three and round down to the nearest whole number. They will gain that amount of points. So this player, who ended the game with 10 coins, would gain three points. Next, they will score points from their wonder board. If they constructed any of their stages of their wonder with victory point symbols on them, they will gain that amount of points. After that, they will score their civilian structures. These are the points on the blue cards. Next, players will score points for their commercial structures. These are the yellow cards they built. For a card with this symbol, a player will count up the number of yellow cards they have in their player area and gain one victory point per yellow card, including this card. For this symbol, they will do the same thing as the yellow card, but count up their brown cards and gain one point per brown card. For this symbol, they will count up the number of gray cards they have in their player area and gain two points per card. For this card, a player will count up the stages of their wonder that they have built, and they will gain one point per stage. Next, a player will gain points for their purple guild cards. Any of these card symbols with two arrows on the sides gains a player one point per card of that color that each of their neighbors has. So a player that built this structure would score one point per blue card their neighbor to the left and their neighbor to the right had. This symbol gives a player two points per gray card their neighbor to the left and their neighbor to the right has built. A card with this symbol allows the player to count up all of their brown, gray, and purple cards, including this card, and gain one point for each of those three colored cards. This card gives a player one point for each negative one defeat token their neighbor to the left and their neighbor to the right has. This symbol gives a player one point per built stage of their wonder they have. It also gains them one point per built stage of a wonder their player to the left and the player to the right has. And this symbol allows a player to choose one of the three symbols to use during their science structures, which will be explained next. If a player built a stage of their wonder with this symbol, they may look to the player to their left and to the player to their right and choose one of their guilds to use as if they had played it themselves. The final thing they will score are their science structures. These are found on the green cards. Each player will separate their symbols into like piles. They will then gain points for like symbols. The amount of points they will gain is the number of cards they have times itself. So the player has one of these symbols and would multiply one times one to gain one point. They have two of these symbols, so would multiply two times two to get four points. And they have three of these symbols, so they would multiply three times three and get nine points. After gaining points for unique symbols, a player will gain points for having sets of three different symbols. For each set of three different symbols they can make, they will gain seven points. This player can make one set of three different symbols and would gain seven points. If a player built the Scientist's Guild, they may choose one of the three symbols at the top to use while scoring their scientific symbols. Also, if a player built a stage of their wonder with scientific symbols on it, they may choose one of the three symbols to use while scoring. The player who ends the game with the most total points is the winner. In the event of a tie, the tied player with the highest value of remaining coins is declared the winner.